It seems ludicrous to think that a mechanical robot could be birth, but much of the modern technology we employ had its roots in crazy notions at some point or another. The majority of us have preconceived ideas about what robots are and how they ought to act. With the technique of manufacturing machines being updated by the method of growing, our concept of mechanical machines can expand through time from strictly mechanical devices, hybrid mechanical organic contraptions, principally living machines and pure artificial life forms. Artificial intelligence or AI will gradually give way to varying degrees of AI, which may be followed by what some could consider a higher quite true intellect. As a designer thinks he can hire children with artificially intelligent robots that 3D print human characteristics, humans may be able to have babies with intimate robots. So keep watching to know more. Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. In this video, we will talk about futuristic female humanoid robots that may bear their children. Now before we get ahead with the video, if you're new here, be sure to subscribe and click the bell symbol to receive future alerts. Let's start the video now without further ado. Arthur C. Clarke first used the term BIOT, which stands for the Biological Robot, in his 1972 book, Rendezvous with Rama. In the book, BIOT is described as a synthetic biological entity developed in advance of a particular space mission. Many new areas have been observed to embrace the limits of biology and robotics. It covers a wide range of topics such as synthetic biology, bionics, cybernetics, and biomimicry. The distinctions between artificial life and real life bioengineering and biomechanical engineering, inorganic and inorganic materials are all blended. Human tissues, stem cells, and even artificial blood cells will be printed using 3D printers. Other 3D printers can create organs, blood arteries, teeth, bones, cartilage, muscles, and even ears. Ironically, it seems like just a matter of time until we started replacing human components like Mr. Potato Head. With the cloning of Dolly the sheep in 1996, the term cloning first appeared in common usage. Since then, several species, including camels, dogs, monkeys, cows, rabbits, and much more, have been cloned. Animal research has always been considered a logical step toward human cloning, which promises a precise genetic duplicate of any individual. There is a distinction between manufactured clones and natural clones, which manifest as identical twins in humans and other species. Gene cloning, reproductive cloning, and therapeutic cloning are the three forms of artificial cloning. Gene cloning creates duplicate genes or DNA segments. Animals are replicated in their entirety through reproductive cloning. In trials aiming at producing tissues to replace damaged or ill tissues, therapeutic cloning creates embryonic stem cells. There is a difference between produced clones, which resemble identical twins, and natural clones of humans and other creatures. The three types of artificial cloning are gene cloning, reproductive cloning, and therapeutic cloning. Engineering disciplines and biological systems are created using synthetic biology. Converging forces in chemistry, biology, computer science, and engineering gave rise to synthetic biology. Imagine it as a biology-based toolbox that modifies our emotions, regulates biological systems, and repairs them using algorithms and automated procedures. Synthetic biology will eventually allow us to program DNA to create custom fuels, meals, and vaccinations. By combining cloning, robotics, and synthetic biology, we can start to comprehend the fundamentals of creating artificial life forms that can reproduce. The only thing we need is the capacity to create reproductive organs. In 1995, over 30 years ago, Greenberg patented the first artificial womb as a manual, middle of the 1990s. Goat fetuses were successfully incubated for weeks by Japanese researchers in a machine with artificial fluid. The lowest gestational age for human fetuses to survive has been lowered to fewer than 22 weeks, thanks to advancements in neonatal intensive care. A typical 40-week pregnancy is just slightly more than halfway complete at that point. Not quite as absurd as its first appears, the technology. Oregon may find use in a variety of replacement artificial uteri scenarios. For instance, if a fetus were transferred from a natural uterus to an artificial one with extended functions, Doctors could treat several conditions independently of the mother's situation, such as her being sick or having an accident. This also increases the possibility of performing some types of fetal surgery earlier rather than waiting until after birth. In a series of experiments, researchers at Cambridge University grew human embryos in a petri dish for the entire 14 days. The ethical restrictions placed in this kind of research by a coalition of 70 nations. Researchers may now investigate the genetic and physical changes that take place in growing embryos thanks to each day's progress. 
A human embryo could control its growth even after it had reached the stage at which it should have been placed into the uterus without the mother's guidance, as discovered by the study's author, Martha Shabazz. This naturally raises the question of whether a synthetic womb would be able to carry a developing person to the term provided it contained the proper nutrients. It also begs a lot of questions regarding all the elements required to create a fully functional person, although it is difficult for us to define what a functional person even is. Since using actual human embryos for scientific purposes is frowned upon, using synthetic embryos instead makes sense because they're not subject to the same social stigma. The first self-repairing and self-replicating biological robots created by AI are called Sinobots. John von Neumann, an American mathematician of Hungarian descent, first presented the concept of an autonomous robot that could use raw materials to recreate itself in 1948. Today, Neumann's dream has come true, but with a significant change. The self-replicating robot isn't constructed of metal, plastic, spur gears, or sprockets. The Cenobots are a new lineage of biological organisms, including the parent robot and its offspring. Sam Kreigman, a computer scientist at the Wise Institute at Harvard and co-author of the Cenobots research that was published today in PNAS, says it was amazing to find that we would create this von Neumann machine using cells rather than robot parts. According to Joshua Bongard, a senior author and computer scientist at the University of Vermont, people have philosophized about this forever. But now, efforts to build biological machines or machines that manufacture biology, which then builds machines, are truly possible. Even though Cenobots don't have a single mechanical component, the researchers nonetheless term them machines. Science could be progressing more quickly than our conceptual and even conceptual framework for this new category of machine life. The distinction between a machine and an organism may not be as distinct as we always thought, adds Bongard. An AI software running on UVM supercomputer conceived the self-replicating Cenobot in the first place. The AI used an evolutionary method that could simulate billions of different biological body types. The objective was to identify the cell arrangement that can self-replicate. An arrangement of cells in the form of the 1980s arcade game Pac-Man was the AI's winning design. Using surgical forceps and microcautery electrodes, biologists Douglas Blackiston hand-sculpted the Cenobots, which are made of groups of 4,000 to 5,000 frog cells floating in a laboratory dish using the AI's design. The parent Cenobots can create offspring within their Pac-Man-shaped mouths thanks to the random frog cells that have been put into the dish. The Cenobabies develop into Cenobot parents. Self-replication is sustained generation after generation by the addition of more frog cells. The programming that directs cell clusters to develop in a certain manner is the process of molding stem cells into a custom form. This particular arrangement of frog cells instructs them to develop into a new self-replicating living form. Whatever you want to call it, this is an AI inventing life. According to Blackiston, these are phenomena that natural selection cannot account for. Cenobots are genetically created creatures that have been programmed. The intelligence of a Cenobot only exists in its design and programming. Blackiston believes that society will have to deal with many of the uses and consequences of this new technology. What if an AI experiments and discovers it can create a better heart? This quick summary of some recent developments make the notion of a robot giving birth to a child, a human child, or a robot child seem less far-fetched. It does seem pretty likely that this will be the headline of a new story in the 21st century. The first artificial human robot in the world gives birth to a child. This involves using theoretical sciences that have advanced from science fiction to actual scientific possibilities to control the weather, gravity, and time. The possibility of robots giving birth to other robots is becoming more real. We must start this dialogue at this very early stage so that the public is well informed and can make wise judgments. Why don't we believe this will occur realistically for several decades? There is always a potential that researchers will be years ahead of everyone else. Perhaps once research into synthetic spider bot shoots led to the much earlier birth of spider bots than anticipated. The fact that many of our developments in the next few years will test our moral sensitivities, our concept of what defines life, our human rights or moral compass, our feeling of authority and particularly the ethical bounds of science doesn't alter the reality that they're inevitable. And that's all for now folks, we hope you all enjoyed the video. If so, kindly hit the like and share buttons. Please let us know what you think by leaving a comment. And don't forget to click the bell button to subscribe to our channel so you won't miss any of our videos. We'll see you guys in the next video.